All right, hello everyone. We're back with our little snail mask over here. I want to go ahead and finish that up, even though I'm done with the eye demo. The only reason I picked it up is to show you guys how to make uh, some fun eyes and, and do some veins uh, out of yarn and things like that. Uh, and so now that we're done with that technique, I will finish this project up and show you some other things. And if you want to, if you have time, you're interested in learning, check these videos out and I will show you how to uh, some new techniques, some more techniques and some interesting ways to do this project. So one of the things I want to do it right now is start to paint Gary's skin. So I'll mix up. He's kind of like some kind of uh, sea foam blue or some kind of blue green. And so I'll go ahead and start putting many, many layers uh, and values of different blue greens for the skin to kind of try and make it look more natural like skin, like human skin, but with these really bizarre colors. So once again, I'm trying to capture a little bit of that, uh, uh, anchor it just a little bit to uh, reality. Even though it is a cartoon, I want to make it believable. Okay, so let's get started. That busted. Ugh. I was not looking for that much paint, but I think my FIFO bottle messed up. It's probably the little rubber tip in there messed up. All right, so I've got, you see here, I've got two yellows, two blues. I'm using double primaries. Uh, that way I can make two different kinds uh, you know, I can actually make many, many, probably countless kinds of blue-green with this. So I'm just going to kind of experiment around, see what I like, probably use many of them uh, just because I want it to kind of look modeled. So if we kind of look at my skin here, you'll see that I'm actually all kinds of different colors. You can see uh, little patches of all kinds of different peach color, pinks. Um, there's some yellows and and you can even see through to the blues and the greens and the violets underneath my skin. Uh, but it's a patchwork. It, it, it's kind of modeled, right? And so I don't have just one skin tone. Uh, I've got many, many, right? And so that's what I want to kind of create for our snail. This layer, I'm just trying to get some good coverage. So I don't care if I'm careful around the, uh, I don't care if I'm careful around the shell. All that shell is going to be repainted. But I do want to be careful around my eyeballs. So I'll make sure I get, you know, everything covered this layer. And then we'll come back putting lots of different layers on this. This is just the base undercoating. I'm several layers in now. I want to go ahead and start showing you a few more details. So some of the ways I was making some of these different patterns on here, uh, I was applying the brush really lightly so that the uh, raised spots got paint on them, but the lower spots didn't. And I'll show you another technique for that uh, in just a moment. I'll actually show you. Uh, it's called dry brush. So I'll show you how to dry brush in some more layers once this dries. All right. So I feel like we did pretty good. We may need some more layers here and there. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to dry brush now. So what I've got here, I, I've lightened up my same color I've started with over here. Uh, and now I'm going to dry my brush off a bit. That way paint only picks up on the high spots. See how it's doing that. You really see it just work right there. So I'm just pulling against all these textures and paint is only coming off on the raised spots and it keeps all the other layers that I've done. All right, so now we've got the right colors. I feel like we've got the right values now. Uh, the rest of the layers will just be to kind of add a little bit of variety and to 
uh, like I said, make more of that mottled effect and to hide any little mistakes that I made. So any little missed spots of paint after this dries and all the paint kind of contracts and new spots open up, I can go back and make sure those are all hit. And so once we do that, then we can finish all that. We can start masking this off, doing some of the texture on the shell, painting the shell. Uh, I may come back and put eyelids on. I don't know. I also need to look at how far up his stems go on his eyes and, and how I want to do that. So I'm just going to look at a bunch of Gary reference photos and see kind of what his eyelids do and how his eyes join on those stems and, and see which Gary scene that I want to use to kind of help me and guide me and inform me in my construction of this Gary mask. I'm now adding another layer of paint to the mask. Notice once again that I'm selectively leaving the layers before visible. So I'm not just painting this like I'm painting a wall in a bedroom. I'm selectively leaving spots that I want to remain visible. So I've started painting the inside of my mask here, and it's going to take some more layers as you can see. But one of the things I want to focus on right now before I put any more layers of paint on it is getting rid of this lumpy wrinkle right here. So the, the thing is caving in under its own weight, and, uh, and the, sh the shape is getting ruined here for my shell, and it doesn't look like a believable shell if it's caving in. So one of the things I'm going to do is reinforce it with some metal. So I'm going to use this as kind of a gusset. I'm adding hot glue to the metal reinforcement, then I have to hold it in place while the glue dries. After inspecting the mask for places that did not adhere to the metal, I add more glue. After that, I add another layer of glue to sandwich in the metal, then smooth it out. Now that everything is secured in place and reinforced, we can see that it is no longer as mangled up as it was before. Uh, you know, there's still some issues about um, the, the shape of this. Um, if it were mine, I probably would have made sure it, uh, I probably would have made sure that the sides were a little more even, but like I said, I'm adopting this mask and I may be able, it's already reinforced on this side. I may be able to bend that wire in such a way that I can pull this out by the end, but I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens. I've got some spray on texture. We're gonna mask off our snail today and we're going to add some texture to it, to the shell, okay? So I wanted to add a little bit of variety, give this thing a little more complexity and interest. And so that's what we're gonna be doing now. We're going to start off by masking off the pieces that we don't want to get paint on with our blue masking tape. This will keep us from getting paint and texture in places that we do not want it. I usually use the blue masking tape because it is less sticky than the regular masking tape. It sticks when you need it to and it comes off when you need it to. As you can see, I bought a thick roll. This allows me to customize each piece of tape that I need to use. 
If I need a thinner piece, I just slice it with my X-Acto knife. If I need a thicker piece, I leave it as it is. I'm especially careful masking around the boundaries and the borders. That way I only get paint and texture where I want it. The places in between the boundaries do not have to be masked off as carefully because you just want to make sure they are covered and do not get any overspray. Here you can see me cutting a piece of this tape into thinner strips. I developed this technique while working on sculptures. When you're creating original, unique things that no one has ever built before, you realize that sometimes you really need to customize everything that you're using. I'm masking off the more finicky pieces with masking tape, and then I'm using paper on the larger pieces that do not require as much precision. Sometimes masking can be tedious, but you want to make sure that you get full coverage. Once you complete the process, you want to make sure you turn the piece around and look at it from multiple angles. Overspray really can get just about anywhere. With this spray texture, as with any spray paint, you want to make sure you mix it thoroughly. For this project, I'm going to be using a Rust-Oleum Stone Effect. You apply this spray on texture much like you would spray paint. You just want to get a comfortable distance of about six or seven inches away from the surface you're painting on. And then you want to keep the spray moving so that it doesn't drip or run. Try to move at a nice even pace so that you get an even distribution and no drips or runs. Okay, now we're ready for our second coat. I want to give this thing a lot of really good texture. Make sure we get all the angles. All right, when that dries, we should be ready to go ahead and paint on top of it. I decided to put one more layer on this just for good measure. We've had plenty of time for our paint, our surface to dry. Now we're ready to unmask this thing. You can kind of see this, the texture that this stuff leaves. It's really nice. So now I'm just going to unmask this. Now we got a nice crisp line where uh, there is texture where it should be and no texture where there shouldn't be. So there we have it. Now it's ready to paint the shell, touch up any little messed up areas. I got to decide what's going to be shell perfectly and what's going to be eyeball now and make sure it all gets perfectly covered uh, when I edge in the paint. And then this thing is pretty well done. Now we're ready for some paint.
Okay, so this layer is dry. Now I'm going to come back and do some dry brush just to kind of give this some texture and a little bit of variety or actually highlight the textures that are already present, right? It's very highly textured because we sprayed it with texture spray. So let's get started. I'm slowing the footage down here just to show you this technique. You'll notice that after I loaded the brush, I immediately went and dried it off. Whoopsie, I accidentally drug my brush through my wet paint. That's one of the reasons you want to wait until each layer dries before adding a new layer. I was just being impatient. I have to add a few more layers of paint to this shell anyway, and the boo-boos will all get covered up by the end. Now it's time to put the final layer of paint around Gary's foot. This final layer will bring his colors back closer to the originals in the cartoon. After many, many layers, we've finally completed this mask. Gary the Snail is ready to wear. I'm going to go ahead and model that for you guys. I hope that this helps. I hope that you've learned something that you can use in this class or something that you can use in your art in general. This concludes our fun little mask project. I'll see you all next time on the next demo. Until then, have a great day.